Okay, hello, welcome back to another video. And we are actually at Coxcomb Basin. And thank you to Travis yes. for driving us here. He's with Julian Tours. Yeah, Julian Tours and Transfer. Julian Tours and Transfer. So if you guys want a ride to Coxcomb or anywhere else around, uh, make sure you come to Julian Tours. I'll leave the information in the description below. Here's for you, it's a little something, just a little tip. It's not much, but thank you very much. I appreciate the information. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we are at Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary. Right now we're gonna walk in, I guess maybe get our ticket mm -hmm. and see which trail we actually want to hike. I don't think we're gonna get a guide. I think we'll be able to do it ourselves. We'll be all right, but let's go in and uh, see how this process works. And this right here, let's see, Birds of Belize. Coxcomb Basin. I think this is a jaguar preserve, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, jaguar. The only jaguar preserve. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Um, I guess we just want to go hiking. Um, is it your first time here? Two tickets. Yes. Okay. So entrance is 10 Belize per person. Five each, okay. so that's ten dollars USD. Here in Belize, it's one to two ratio. Can I? So we're gonna write our names in this log book right here. She's gonna explain the map to us. Here, I'll leave you uh, my I'll leave my card with you. This is my YouTube channel, oh. Facebook, Instagram. Go watch the video. Sure. So thank you very much. Oh, and what's your name? Um, Dairy. Huh? Dairy. Dairy. Okay, beautiful name. And how long have you been working here for? Uh, for almost four years. Four years. Um, Okay, okay, we're excited. Thank you very much. So this is the map right here. She's gonna to explain to us. And, and these are the trails right here that you can choose. They have the path name, the distance, symbology, difficulty level. So remember, um, I didn't put out that Vietnam video, but uh, I went to Vietnam and I actually went to one of the national parks over there and I didn't look at the map. And on the map, on every map, there's a legend and that will show you what like the landmarks are or the broken lines or the straight lines, red lines, orange lines. And uh, I actually started walking around the whole national park and wasn't even inside. So today we're not going to make that mistake. We're going to make sure that we follow the map, we follow the directions and we don't get lost. This right here is the Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary uh, Visitor Center, you can say. And as you can see here in Belize, um, you know, they use all the raw materials around them to build the things they have here, which is, which is very nice. It's very nice. I actually like that. Uh, so check out the tree. So we're going to sign our name. You can get Wi-Fi here. You can get cold soda and water, which we probably should bring water with us. As you can see, 350 species of birds. It's gonna be interesting. I hope we see something cool on this trail. Maybe, we'll see. Check out this piece of history right here. I don't wanna call it ancient history because it was only used in the 70s and the 80s, but Belize used to be a big uh, logging port. They used to log here in Belize. Um, and so I guess right here, we're looking at a truck that used to transport these types of logs in the 70s and the 80s, as that sign just said. And I'm not exactly sure if um, Belize logs rubber or uh, harvests rubber. I don't know exactly how to put that in a sentence, but um, I know places like Brazil um, and deep in the Amazon, like those governments get paid by other governments and they actually go deep into the rainforest deep into the amazon and they completely wipe it out of trees and that's how they make rubber so i don't know if that type of thing happens here um but when they do that it messes up um like the homes for certain animals and things like that so you know the animals have to end up eventually moving out of those areas and again i don't believe i don't know if that happens here in belize i i know in brazil it does but just quick little quick little history we have more birds that's a big one that's a vulture huh so yeah just quick little history on belize and you know the type of things that they did here also uh i believe about like 15 percent of 
um, like Belize and agriculture, like as far as like produce that they sell is like uh, bananas and like citrus, like limes and things like that. So um, Belize actually is a producer of a few things. And I thought one thing that was interesting is over towards San Ignacio, there's like a, a white German Mennonite community. And the guy, Travis, that you've seen earlier in the video, he informed me that actually most of the Mennonite communities supply the country of Belize with its produce as far as like fruits and veggies and things like that. I'm sure individually other people grow their own things, but I thought that was actually very interesting to think that the Mennonites apparently supply this country with their produce. So, you know, the more you know. Okay, so since it's your first time here in Paxom, I'll just give you guys a brief history of the place. And after that, I will be summarizing the trails, okay. and then you let me know which category you're interested in, okay? okay? So that I can go in depth into that category. Now, Paxcom Basin was established in 1986 as the first Jawa reserve in the world. We are co-managed by the Belize Audubon Society, which is an NGO organization, along with the government of Belize. Uh, we are currently protecting more than 128,000 acres of flora and fauna, including Victoria Peak, which is known as the second highest peak here in Belize, second highest point. Uh, we also provide accommodations. We have um, trails where you can visit or hike to a waterfall viewpoint or do some bird watching. You can also do camping, river tubing in a lazy relaxing river. And we also work with buffer communities as well, like in the case of the village right there at Maya Center, that um, the ladies you miss it, but there are some ladies right there who sell our entrance fee to the park. Okay, so that's like a way of also us working with the buffer community. Now, uh, the trails that we have here are in different categories, into motorist trainers and very strenuous. Some of them you must have a guide to go there. Other trails are self-guided. The only trail that requires a guide will be two tiger fern trails over here, which is the waterfall and the tiger fern trail the outlier and victoria peak outlier and victoria peak are only open in the dry season here in belize so at the moment they are closed however tiger fern are open for the entire year which uh, which is open but you must have a guide okay all right so we just started this walk this is the only jaguar preserve in the world with i believe about 200 jaguars here so it's not a lot, you know, when you think about these animals um, going extinct and things like that, it's actually hard to believe that they will go extinct. Like only 200 jaguars, you know, that's, that's not a lot. And this is, I think, 165,000 acre wildlife sanctuary. So think about that. These are the signs that you will see while you're walking through Coxcomb basin wildlife sanctuary and we are coming up on the waterfall i think she said this was called black pool down here but she didn't say it's because the water is black she said it's because the leaves and like the canopy you know surrounding it is you know covering it so that way it looks really dark so we're gonna head down here there's some people down there already you're allowed to swim in here and do things like that she just said make sure you don't Remember, she said, make sure you don't jump off the top of this waterfall over here, which I know there's some daredevils, but I don't know why you would. This looks very nice. I'm going to tell you what, though. I thought about taking a dip in there, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going in there because I don't know if there's snakes or anything like that. You never know. You truthfully never really know. So it's a very nice area, though. I'll take you guys over here to see the actual waterfall right here. It's coming down. Or super nice. Ah, maybe you could swim back there. There's like a cave or something. Is there a cave? Cave? Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a cave. Okay. So he says there's a little cave back there. You can swim down there and go in. And she was saying, don't jump off the top up there. Obviously, can whatever happens to you is your fault. So, very interesting. Yeah, this area is super nice. I'm not sure what we're going to do, if we're going to continue on to the bluff or if we will go back and take another trail. I'm not sure, but we will figure it out together. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. Good? You're your guide? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You suggest going to Ben's Bluff? Ben's Bluff, yeah. Go yeah. right ahead. It's good? 
Pretty nice, nice scenic. Nice scenic? Yeah. All right, I guess we're gonna go to Ben's Loft. Thank you. Have, Have a good day. Yeah. All right, so we just did a quick stop. I don't. I think if maybe there was like no one here, we would probably sit there for a little bit and maybe swim or something, but there was some people there. We don't, you know, plus we're just hiking. We wanna see as much of these trails as we can, so. We're gonna continue on. Ben, and like I said, this is a two and a half hour round trip. So, you know, the place closes at four and, or excuse me, the place closes at five. We have a pickup at four. Right now it's 1221. So we'll make it in time, but you know, I like to be, like to be safe and prepare for the worst. Always have a backup plan. Okay, so here we are on Crossbow Trail, I believe it is. Uh, we skipped out on Ben's Bluff as it was another 20 minute hike from the waterfall. It was a strenuous hike. Eh, so we said, let's just take it easy. We went back down, we hopped on another trail. And right now what we're doing is we're walking along the lazy river. It's beautiful. This is the river that uh, you can go tubing down. This trail actually takes you back around to the visitor center. And then from the visitor center, we can hop off and walk on some other trails uh, for now. Um, if we don't see anything in this video, which it's a good potential that we might not see anything. It's uh, more than, you know, just an educational video, if anything. It's like I told you guys earlier, from Hopkins, uh, we went to Julian uh, Tours. Uh, we booked a round, round trip uh, ticket for 90 USD. Uh, that's for two people, 90 USD. If you add an additional person after that, it's 15 USD, so just be mindful of that. Um, from Hopkins, we got in there, he picked us up at our Airbnb and then drove us, I'd say about 35, 40 minutes here to the Wildlife Basin and Preserve. And um, it was a very nice drive as driving all through Belize is. Wonderful green lush forest, beautiful sights. And then, uh, from there, as I showed you guys earlier, we walked in, paid, how much was the ticket? I think 10 Belizean. Yeah, five US dollars each. Five US dollars each. And uh, yeah, now we're just walking. We made it to Blackpool. So I told you guys earlier in this video that Blackpool was by that uh, waterfall. I think I was wrong. Well, I was wrong. So here it is. And we are absolutely broke off. Like so broke off so i'm gonna put some of this water here on my face just to cool me down it's cold i wouldn't suggest to drink that water but you could definitely swim in here and chill and relax i think we have like about one more mile uh, until well it says the next rest area but we should almost be done with this hike uh man we've been putting in the miles today i told Nesta to wear her watch so i could tell you guys how many miles we uh, put in but no watch so it's okay but is that a little cave right there it looks like a little cave well it's probably not like a cave but just an overhang of the rock but this is a little rest area you can come and sit at while you're here at blackpool exhausting so we're gonna get it in we're gonna keep it moving and uh i don't know we should be ending here very shortly so hopefully the next site i can bring you guys to is the plane crash i'm really really interested in seeing that so let's carry on there's a toucan right here there's a toucan right here wow his beak is so yellow. Oh, he just flew away. Wow. As we were just, as I just filmed that last clip and we were walking, I heard wings flap. Whoo, whoo. Looked up, a legit toucan. Wow. Maybe we'll be able to see it again over here. That was really cool. So here we are. Maybe this is the end. Yeah, river tubing exit right here. I'm not sure if you're completely allowed to swim in here. I think you are, but yeah, you can swim in here. Just gotta 
be mindful of the things in here. I can't believe we just saw a toucan. That was awesome. Wow. I think this is one of the biggest trees I've ever seen. The base of this is ginormous. Banyan tree? Banyan? I don't know how to pronounce it. The size of this tree is literally ginormous. Check me out next to it. It's not even... <laughs> Look how big. Wow. It's had, this has, has to be over 100 years old. Oh. Most Easily. definitely. Whenever you don't want to work hard, just think. There's someone always working harder than you. Check out the little army of ants. <laughs> it's nuts. National Geographic needs to hire me. I got the skill. It's raining a little heavy now, but it's okay. We're protected by the canopy of the forest. We still have about two hours left here in the national park. So we're doing another trail about 4.2 kilometers. It's a little strenuous, shouldn't be too bad. And then I think on the way out, we're going to see one more trail where apparently a plane crashed and the plane is still there. So hopefully so far, only one sighting of a toucan and multiple vultures, lots of trees. Other than that, just enjoying the day. I showed you earlier in the video uh, when I was coming in right here that this is the nature center uh, preserve, like part of the visitor center. So I'll just come in here and give you guys a quick glimpse of the type of stuff that you will see here in the welcome center. Just gives you, you know, history on the preserve, facts, Mayan crafts. Mayan ancestors used the stone to carve their hieroglyphic writing. Wow. Very interesting. Mayan culture here is, um, is, is very big. As you guys know, Mayans are displaced all over uh, South America, Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, everywhere. Oh, over here we have some skulls. Wow, what is this? I've never seen this animal. Oh, I think maybe this animal is the one you were talking about. Yeah, I think so. A deer, white-tailed deer, very, very small skull. So jaguars in Coxcomb Basin, each pattern is unique. So they must have named these jaguars right here, mother and her cub. This one, old man, first detected outside Coxcomb in 06. He was two years old at the time. I was telling Ness as on our walk, um, I'm sure I can find the answer in here, but before I do, I'm just gonna tell you guys what I was thinking about. Uh, when I was telling you guys earlier, there's 200 jaguars here in this preserve. I was explaining to her, like, how do they keep track of the Jaguars? Do they put a tracking device on them? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe a tracking radio device, transmitter. radio oh. transmitter, things like that. And Ness, can you tell the people, you said, she said it out there, this place is part of the auto. The Audubon Society of Belize. And can you explain a little bit, if you know what that is? Like They're they help. Like a conservation society. Um, so I guess they help maintain the land and like with research and stuff like that. Okay, so very interesting. Ness is actually going to school to be a vet. She's almost, she's almost there. So, this whole animal sanctuary preserve is her is her uh, her forte. And out here, actually, they looks like there's a jaguar cage. Maybe this is how they capture them in the wild. Maybe they'll put some food or something in here in order to, you know, bring them in these types of traps. I don't want to call it a trap because I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to make it sound like it's, oh, look at the bird. Nice little colorful, colorful, colorful bird up there. But again, I don't want to call it a trap because I don't want to make it sound like, you know, they're mistreating these animals. But maybe when the jaguar needs to get some medicine or be helped out, you know, they'll sedate it and 
trap him in one of those cages. So we are now at the downed airplane. I'm not exactly sure the story behind this airplane, but let's go check it out. It, this uh, airplane crash right here is approximately two minutes walk off the road. It's a hundred yards. So check this out. I've never seen a plane wreck before. Oh, right here. It'll tell us how this plane crashed. Crashed onto this tree while attempting to land on the straight stretch of access road used as a landing strip. Between 1983 and 84, it was caused by a severe thunderstorm. Wow. Wow, so a thunderstorm caused this crash right here of this plane. And this right here is the last stop on our hike. Trying to get a thumbnail. That's crazy. Assuming the pilot survived. I think that's what it said over there. But would you look at this? I think this is a Cessna. So, Ness, did you have a good day? Yeah, look at the electrical wires. Ah, yeah. What was your favorite part, Ness? Tell the people what your favorite part about the... I think the black pool. The black pool? My favorite part, My favorite yeah. part was seeing the toucan. Oh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in and watching another video. I appreciate the likes, the subs, and the support. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Ciao.